And I could just, you know, recite some scripture, but I do want to share a little story about it. I'll make it short. Don't worry, it won't be too long. But immediately as leaving this today, communion, the Last Supper, with one another, 1 Corinthians 11.28 comes to mind. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink from the cup, which is Jesus Christ. We ought to examine ourselves. And oftentimes when I would take communion, when I was younger, I would partake in communion with guilt, with sorrow, with hatred for myself and my own soul. Because I would eat it and just think about how terrible of a person I am, despite knowing Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Does anybody relate to that when they take their communion together as a church? Maybe some of you do, maybe some of you don't. But I want to encourage those who feel this way, okay? Uh, a good mentor of mine back in Milwaukee at Grace, Moma Lions Church, he used to be in a game. And in fact, it was actually a game he started. And ironically, being a part of this game, in order to join a game, if you don't know, you have to get jumped in. Jumped in means if I want to join, everybody who's a part of the game has to beat you up. And then you're officially a part of the game. And since he never had to do it, since he made the game, he never really did it before. Him and his brother started this game, right? And finally, after a few years, they came to know Jesus Christ. And they're like, oh my gosh, we cannot be game leaders anymore. We can't keep living like this. We can't be a part of such a terrible lifestyle. We need to leave. But just like how you get in, you have to get out the same way. You have to get jumped out. So if you want to leave, the entire game will come together and they will beat you until they feel like they've beaten you enough so that you can leave. And so he was like, okay, we have to do this. They told their game, the game was like, all right, come on this day, and if you don't, we're gonna shoot and kill your entire family because we know where you live. And he woke up, he was getting ready to go, and someone was knocking on his door. And he opened it and it was his brother. His brother was beaten, he had a broken eye socket, his, he was bleeding, his jaw was broken. His brother said to him, you don't have to worry anymore. You see, what he didn't know was his brother told him the wrong time. His brother showed up and said, beat me how you would beat my brother so that he doesn't come here and have to be beaten too. I'm gonna take his jumping for him so he doesn't have to get jumped. And all he could do, my friend, my mentor, he just kept crying. He couldn't believe that his brother had taken a beating for his livelihood. And instead of saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was so terrible. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did this. Oh my gosh, I can't believe. All he could think was, I love my brother so much because he sacrificed his life for me. And very much so when you look at Christ, when you examine yourself, do not examine yourself of how good you are, but how good your Lord is. What he's done for you. And so as we eat this, as we commemorate together, that's what I want us to reflect on. Not who you used to be, but what God did to change you from who you used to be. Not what you're currently doing that fails, but what God is currently doing so that you succeed spiritually in our life. It's not about you. It's not about how good you are. You're not doing anything worthwhile enough for the kingdom. Only God is. That's why we take from the bread that is broken from Christ. And we drink from the blood of Christ as remembrance for our sins. Amen? Amen. So because of that, I would like to read from you a more familiar text, I believe. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given things, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we can take that out right now. I believe you guys have the chip on your cup. So this is resemblance of the body that was broken on the cross. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance for me. His body that was broken, his life that was taken from him. And so let's eat it in remembrance of him.